Hello everyone, and welcome to the third method in this series with Bernie Hogarth. Now let me start with saying that this method is really, really hard. It was the hardest of all method for me. I must have drawn this like three or four times already. So you need a lot of practice to master his method. I have seen a video of him drawing the head and I have replied like six, eight times to understand. He drew very fast, so you need to understand what he's saying and what he's drawing at the same time. It starts a bit differently than all the other methods. With, uh, with not with a circle but with an elongated ellipse. A width of two units and height of three units. Now the basic of his method is uh, using the front view as a base. So you draw the front view then you rotate the head in a certain way. So I draw the front view with the elongated shape then I draw the curve of the three quarters face, the line of the middle of the nose and then mirror the distance from the middle vertical line and the curve line on the opposite side of the elongated ellipse which will give me the back of the skull. Next I draw the back of the skull all the way to the nose line and continue the jaw lines on both sides mirroring the jaw line from the edge of the face to the flat area of the head and that will give you the limited area where the visor of the eyes will be. The flat area on the side of the head starts from the hairline and end at the nose line and continue roughly all the way to the chin. So it's like a mix between the Loomis cranium uh, circle and Bridgman side plane. With the visor drawn, you can simply draw the nose glabula in between and the ridge of the nose after. Now in this method, we don't draw the mouth itself first. We draw the muzzle of the area that the lips sit on. It can be drawn like a barrel, a barrel drawn from the base of the nose all the way to the top of the chin and limited on the sides by the cheek lines on both sides. The chin can be drawn as a box with half of it facing down and half of it facing up like we did in the Bridgman method. As for the feature, we have the same rules, one eye is spaced between the eyes, the nose limit at the eye corner. The superciliary arc is about a third way above the brow area. That uh, arc above the eyes, which is the limit of the eyebrows or the ridge above the eye. This will be the plain change in the head, especially in older people. The zygomatic bone can also be drawn halfway from the corner of the eye to the jaw, turning point in around 45 degrees angle. The nose can be segmented into three areas the nasal bone, the cartilage, and the bone of the nose, or the greater alar cartilage. The shape of the top lips is an arc, no matter what the perspective is. It will make sure that your lips are always on the same level, no matter what perspective you draw them in. The good thing about this barrel of the mouth or the muzzle of the mouth, it will show you the side plane of the lips, that they are turning back into the face. Remember, the lips are not on a plane level. They arc on the face from the front to the back. The ear placement from the brow line to the nose line, ending with the jaw line all the way to the shin. From the brow line to the nose line.
Now the turning area of the jaw or the cheek bones have like two sphere under it which are the masseter muscle groups or the cheek muscles. Okay, the pros and cons for this method. The pros are, this method is based on correct anatomy. It locks in the face features and face planes together. So you have the planes and you have the features. It will make it easier for you to paint the values later on. And so it helps with the values and it's easier to paint light and shadows when you have the planes of the face already put down along with the anatomy. As for the cons, it's not an easy method for beginners. I had really some troubles trying to make it right. It needs a lot of practice and then some. Also, there is a risk of having your face looking a bit familiar because uh, they have a familiar theme going on with the, with the mouth muscles and the spherical shapes of the face in this method. Also, the bones and the muscle structure are emphasized a bit too harsh, resulting in a female's drawing that a bit rigid. For the three quarter, we will start with the same way we started in the structure section. I start with an elongated ellipse, decide where the nose gonna be pointing at and adding the space to get the back of the head like we did before. Then I draw the jaw shape on the far end with the dip at the eye area. It is bumpy at the cheek area and a bit narrower at the jaw. And then we mirror the jaw line to the other side. Between the two lines that we just did, we will get the eye visor. The eye line halfway of the head, the same as before, and the brow line is third of the space under the hairline and to the nose line. Now the mouth the muzzle or the barrel uh, starts from the bottom of the nose all the way to the top of the chin, where the chin box sits. Make sure when you draw a female to keep all the edges and features smoothed out, no hard edges. Now the essential uh, structure is, is done, all is left now is detailing the face, according to the reference if you are drawing from one or to your imagination and the character you want to draw.
the front view is, is a bit easier when it comes to this method. I just draw the same elongated ellipse and stick with it since the face isn't turning either way. I divide it horizontally and vertically and draw the visor between the brow line, the third of the space, between the eye and the hairline. And then the edges of the visor are at the flat areas on the side of the cranium. The edges of the visor stops at the flat areas on both sides of the head, at the cranium circle. The nose is halfway between the brow line and the shin. Uh, the jaw line comes down from the visor and back toward the ear, following the cheekbone. And it curves its way around the cheek all the way to the chin. The mouth muzzle start at the nose base, as we said before, all the way to the chin box. And from the sides, it goes to the middle of the eye. The mouth muzzle is two-thirds of the area from the nose to the chin. The chin is the final third of that area. The cheeks curve down from the visor around and point toward the eye corners. So you have to do like a half a circle and they point toward the eye corner. If you draw a line from the eye corner to the cheeks, it will hit the place where the jaw turns toward the chin. Now be careful again of hard edges uh, or protruding muscles when you draw a female face. These guidelines in this method are there to show you where the shadow will be and where the features will be. So be gentle with the lines here. To start the side view, I simply draw the same elongated ellipse I did before and then I rotate it 90 degrees 
and place it intersecting with the top part of the first ellipse, corner to corner. This way I create a square, 3 spaces wide and 3 spaces long. Now we put our usual guidelines, the nose halfway between the brow line and the chin line, the eyes in the middle of the head, the mouth in three parts between the nose and the chin. Now in this part I jumped ahead and did the features right away. Uh, I forgot to add the visor first and then the flat area of the cranium. Because I did so many portraits I already know where they fit. So if you are a beginner you have to do the same steps as we did before. We put the cranium circle and then the visor at the edge of it and then we put the eyes in it. So I left this part and I didn't edit uh, that part out. To show you that when you do these methods over and over or you choose one of your own, after a while you won't need to draw all these guidelines. You will be quicker and faster with the method. You will have the experience to go for the final uh, details right away. Because it will be in the back of your mind like, uh, like if you're driving. You're not gonna focus on every single guideline if you did it over and over. Practice makes perfect. I added the areas I forgot to, to put back then, the visor and the cranium circle, after I did the features. But it's always best if you're starting up to go the right way. The visor, the cranium circle, then the features. Remember on the side view the angle of the mouth is about 30 degrees so the muzzle is curved inward to the sides of the face it will mostly show up at 30 degree angle from the nose to the chin Okay, now let's do the final portrait. I start with the same old elongated ellipse, but in a slight angle since the face I'm drawing in every section is a bit tilted to the left. So remember, the ellipse base should always follow the chin. If the chin is rotated, you rotate the ellipse with it. I measure the distance from the nose base curve to the vertical line and mirror it to the back of the head. This will give us the back of the skull. And then I will draw the jawline from both sides, which will give me the edges of the visor in between the two lines. The muzzle of the mouth starts from the middle of the eye. The edge of the muzzle will start from the middle of the eye to the left and the right and from the top it will be start at the base of the nose and end at the edge of the chin box at the bottom. The eyes in the visor have one eye space in between, the nose edge stops at the corner of the eyes and the lips curve on the muzzle going back to, to the side of the face also stopping at the middle of the eye.
you can see here it, she looks a bit weird but I will explain what I did wrong a minute from now Even though this tutorial isn't about hair, but remember when you're drawing hair, not to think of them as a single hair coming out of the scalp. Always think in groups when it comes to hair. Groups and strands that follow the shape of the head and the laws of gravity. So as you can see my mistake is that I misjudged the sizes of the mouth and the nose simply due to having the muzzle go a bit wider than it should which led to a big goofy mouth and nose that needed to be adjusted by liquefying it. Always remember the edges of the nose stopped at the eyes and the edges of the lips stopped at the middle of the eye. Also leave a third of the space to the chin box underneath the mouth. Also, I did the eyes a bit higher than the middle uh, middle line of the head and the face didn't turn all the way as it should. Now I'm fixing all of that in liquify. I probably need a lot more practice on this uh, method this because I did maybe a couple of drawings of this method before but uh, it's really hard method to follow. It will be great to, to use when you're doing some sculpture because it will give you the correct planes of the head that will help you a lot when you're sculpting a face using either digital or uh, traditional sculpting tools. Okay, and by that we are done with Bernie Hogarth method, and here is the final sheet. It was a, it was a hard one, I, uh, I admit. And uh, with that we are done with the third video. Coming up next, Jack Ham. It will be a very interesting chapter. He is a good cartoonist, and it will be a really interesting chapter. So I will see you then. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.